Hi, welcome to Take 5, a daily Bible time studying the New Testament by chapters. Today is April 1st, and we're in Titus 3. He saved us according to his mercy, Titus 3, verse 5. Chapter 3 begins with one more time of reinforcing behavior standards that Christians ought to hold, being subject to rulers, to be obedient to authority, and always be ready to do good at any time the opportunity presents itself. Those words are balanced against verse 2 that reminds us to never malign or be evil against anyone, nor to be a troublemaker. Instead, for all whose lives we touch, we are to be gentle and considerate. With verse 3, Paul begins speaking in a similar way as he does to the Ephesians in chapter 2 of that book. Here he says, For we also once were foolish ourselves, disobedient, deceived, enslaved to various lusts and pleasures, spending our life in malice and envy, hateful, hating one another. Compare this with the first three verses of Ephesians 2. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. To each group, Paul describes the lives of those who are not saved. Both times, Paul speaks of the negative impact that sin has on the life it possesses, and with both passages, it addresses it as the Christian's former life, the one to which they are now dead. This is from where God saved us. It's interesting that verse 4 here in Titus 3, as well as in the second chapter of Ephesians, both begin with the word but. Titus reads, But when the kindness of God, our Savior, and his love for mankind appeared, he saved us. And to the Ephesians, Paul states, but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. The message to each is crystal clear, but God saved us. In like manner, as the apostle told the Ephesians, so here Paul teaches in Titus. He saved us not on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, but according to his mercy, by the washing of regeneration and renewing by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out upon us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior. It's not by good works anyone is saved. Of what he says as on the basis of deeds which we have done in righteousness, which means not by works we do purposefully to wanting to make ourselves right with God or in attempting to be righteous. In the garden, Satan said, you will be as God knowing good and evil. Thus, by your own standard of righteousness, you will attempt to adequately please God and create redeemed lives. But scripture annuls this here due to salvation requiring the filling of the washing clean by the Holy Spirit. Salvation is not about works, but about washing. To have any notion of washing away by your own being good enough so to achieve salvation is utter foolishness. In Titus 3 verse 6, we learn his Holy Spirit is poured out upon us through Jesus. So if salvation is only by means of being renewed through the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit is made available to us through Jesus, there's definitely a link presented in our need for Jesus to be saved. Paul teaches again, both here and in Ephesians, of our being justified by God's grace and thereby are made heirs, not by good deeds, but his mercy and grace, these being the elements giving us the hope of eternal life. Good works want to point the credit back to ourselves of how well we do and how deserving we are by our own merit. True salvation, though, is the gift of God, so no one can boast. If it was earned through your being better than others, always remember there will be at least one other person doing a better job than you, that continue, continuing right up the line to Jesus. Closing then with verse 8, it's interesting how the apostle wrote this sentence, saying that if you believe God for what has been said regarding salvation— then due to that, you will recognize the need to be careful and not miss out at opportunities of engaging in good works. For the holy life, the fruitful life, is what brings him glory. 
And this, Paul says, is good and profitable for all who believe. Thanks for being here today. Now may God's grace and peace be ours as we seek to live our utmost for his highest. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now.